So recently, a huge storm called Hurricane Ian just ripped through the state of Florida. Now, it hit the coast as a Category 4, just under a Category 5, which is the highest category of a hurricane. And it was massive. Now, it did hit land, and it did slow down quite a lot. However, that made it carry a lot of rain. So the coast, of course, the west coast of Florida got smashed, and a lot of people lost everything. Some people lost some, some people lost everything. And, you know, people are in a rough, rough spot right now. So if you want to help out in any way that you can, there are some couple of donation sites, such as American Red Cross that you can donate to. I will leave them down below in the description of this video. Uh, that way you guys can donate if you wish. As far as my family goes and my situation, I am very fortunate. We made out just fine uh, where I'm located. There's areas where I'm located that didn't, but as far as my home goes and my family, we made out okay. So I'm here to tell you guys what the police do during these storms. What is our plan of action? What are we supposed to do when these approach and so forth? So we're, we're first responders. We have to still work. Like Our job doesn't stop. Most people who work in the state of Florida when these storms come, they are off work. Their work is obviously going to send them home so they can be with their families, protect their homes, and do whatever they need to do, evacuate if needed. But if you are a law enforcement officer, if you are a firefighter, anybody else that's part of first response, you're not going anywhere. All right, You're going to have to stay. You're going to have to help out your community. That's what you signed up for. And yes, that means that we have to leave our families. So when a storm is on approach and we know that it's coming or we have a pretty good idea it's coming, there's some chances that sometimes they actually dodge us. I can't remember the name of the last storm that came by, but it's coming at us like a category five and it just made a slight curve and dodged out of the way. And we got real lucky with that one because that could have caused a lot of devastation. But this one turned right towards us and went right through pretty much the entire state. Now it caused a lot of wind damage and rain to the coast, but it um, caused a lot of, of flooding. So that's what we really had to deal with uh, here in my community and a lot of areas around the area have had to deal with flooding. Now, let me tell you, the emotions on these people's faces when deputies went up to their doors, uh, it, it, you could tell how grateful they were to them. When we first got up here, you couldn't even see the grass. Right now, we're using our deuce and a half, and the National Guard is assisting us, and we're using those vehicles currently. So as soon as I know this storm is coming, we are prepped and ready at my house. I, I, I get my wife ready with everything she needs as much as possible, and I got to go into work. So we get switched to what's called a B shift. Now, usually in law enforcement, there's already a B shifts for patrol, but a B shift basically means that everybody in the department switches to an alpha or bravo shift and day or night shift. And this usually goes into effect the day prior to the storm hitting a day ahead of time. So as soon as you can get prepped, you get everything prepped for your family, get boarded up if you think it's going to be that bad. But yeah, so we switch those shifts and then what are our duties? So basically prior to the storm, our duties are to manage chaos. So when these storms approach, people tend to hit the stores and rip everything off the shelves and then they get to fights and so forth like that. So we're kind of staged at these different locations to help keep the peace. There's also sandbagging locations. So the community comes together, we fill sandbags so people can pick them up and have them for their homes. The sandbags help with flooding. So along with filling sandbags, we'll help out any way that we can. We'll go check some residents. We have a kind of like a senior watch program where we visit seniors on a regular basis to make sure that they're doing well. So we also check on them, make sure they're good. If they need to evacuate out of the homes, make sure everything's set for them. We do a lot of things like that pre-storm. Now, once the storm starts to hit, we eventually get to a point where we don't do anything. I think when winds are a above 45 miles per hour, uh, we are called to be stationary. We need to go somewhere to hunker down, and we are not allowed to really be on the streets because it's dangerous. Basically, you're pretty much on your own at that point. Now, some of us might still be around when some gusts, big gusts come through, but eventually when it becomes sustained winds above 45 miles per hour, then that becomes too dangerous and we are going to be hunkering down until basically the storm passes. So that's why it's important that you are ready uh, to go yourself. Emergency services aren't really going to be able to help you. Uh, obviously, we will do everything that we can if there is a serious emergency to help you out. But for the most part, you're pretty much going to be on your own um, and it's just not safe to be out there. So as soon as the storm passes and the wind starts to slow down enough for us to get out, we will get out there and immediately start evaluating the area. We spread out, we patrol, we check the businesses, 
We'll look for downed trees, power lines, all the different kinds of things, just to make sure that nobody's going to get hurt once everything starts to come back up. As soon as these storms pass, people like to just come out and explore. Now I get the curiosity, but at the same time, that causes a lot of problems because you can end up getting in a traffic crash yourself, sinking your car. Please do not drive your car into flooded streets. It's one thing if you have a big lifted truck, you feel like you could make it through, okay. But I've seen so many cars, low cars, try to get through these floodwaters. You suck water in your engine, your engine is done, your car is totaled, it's not going anywhere. So don't try it. Um, but yeah, after the storm, it's all basically clean up, finding what the problem areas are, blocking off roadways if we need to, redirecting traffic. If we get a flooded roadway, we're going to block it off, get crews out there to block it off. And then we might have some police stationary temporarily until we can get uh, the road blocked off. But even with the road blocked off, people were still going around these barricades. I th To me, like that... Okay, I mean, you're going to have to pay for all the damages and all that stuff, but you do take away resources when you call 911 saying, hey, I'm stuck in the middle of the water, I need help. So be very, very, very careful when it comes to that stuff. Give us time to recover. And nothing's open, all right? So the storm passes, nothing's open. People were, were trying to get to businesses and so forth, walking up to the doors and doors are closed. I mean, they send those employees home. Nothing's going to be open. So we were out there just making sure that nobody's actually trying to break into these businesses and so forth. But you're going to have a lot of law enforcement out there, fire department, EMS. Uh, they're going to be ready as soon as possible to help in any situation as well. Now, these AB shifts could last uh, several days after the fact, depending on how much damage is going on and how much needs to be repaired. They're going to keep extra patrol, extra officers on the streets until we can get these figured out. Because once people start getting back out there, the normal day-to-day -day life problems that police have to deal with come back. So we have to manage those as well as managing the busy streets, the flooded streets and so forth. So yeah, so we're still, we'll still be on standby or we'll still be on a B shift until all of the hurricane issues are dissolved. Another thing we would do is security for shelters. So a lot of these people lose their homes and schools and bigger facilities become shelters for them until they can get them back into their homes or to some other location. So I actually ended up working one of these uh, oh, through the night, 12 hours to sit at these facilities, to basically your security. You're just making sure that everybody behaves themselves because even though these people have lost everything, there's still some people out there that even though they lost everything, still want to create problems. So we as law enforcement have to be present. I did that with one other officer at a facility. Yeah, we just basically made sure everything was good. Uh, we had no issues, so we, we were lucky. Didn't have to deal with any problems. They know we're there, we're visible. So I think that kind of helps keep things under control. And it's pretty sad uh, watching these people have to sleep in a, a big gym. That sucks. So like I said, guys, I'll leave some links down below if you guys want to donate. Uh, but that pretty much covers what we do in law enforcement. Uh, during a big storm such as this. Crappy part is that we have to leave our families, uh, especially if it's a really big storm. Uh, we don't know what's really going on at home if we lose power or, or cell phones. That really sucks because I have no idea what's happening at my house while I'm out dealing with the storm and other people out there. So I can't find anything out until I can at least get home uh, to check once I get a break. Sometimes they'll give us a break to get off and go home just to check our families, make sure everything's good, and we have to come back in. Yeah. That's our job, you know? So yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, if you think I missed anything, leave me down below a comment and I'll get back to you. We'll see you guys next time. Later.